Good afternoon all. My desk is a bit of a mess because I've been building this. Lots of lovely flashing lights. And uh, what this is, and it's this bit down here, not the one with all the red LEDs, that was a previous video. Uh, that was to do with shift registers. I'll put a link to that up here if you want to watch the video about shift registers. But this one is about 555 timers. These are all 555s. Uh, the first one is in a stable mode, so it's running just as an oscillator. All of the remaining ones are just in logic mode. And in fact, a 555, if you uh, pull up pin 6, which is there, that's a threshold, pull that up to VCC, and then go in on pin 2 and come out on pin 3, these 555s just simply work as inverters, so that you can see that um, each stage is an inversion of the previous stage. Uh, if I take out that second capacitor, it goes much faster. You can't really see what's going on there. So I put that second capacitor in to slow the whole thing down, and you can see that each stage just inverts the, uh, the previous data. So the 555 timer is an interesting chip. We all know it's an interesting chip. Um, as well as the A-stable uh, oscillator mode and the monostable timer mode, both of which of course use capacitors. It also has various different uh, logic modes which you can uh, get the thing to do without a capacitor. This is the simplest of them, it's an inverter, but it can also do an AND type function. It's, uh, it's an odd one, but uh, it can be done. And of course there is the set reset latch within the 555 which you can access and play with uh, separately from the sort of timer se sections. So here's a 555 timer on a small breadboard. I've got an LED on pin 3 and through a resistor to ground and I've got a switch on uh, the trigger input which is pin 2 and another switch on the threshold input which is pin 6. Uh, pin 4 reset is just floating, it tends to pull itself high 7, which is discharge, is not used. 5, which is the control input, is not used. And I can just play with the set reset latch. So if I press uh, the switch that pulls pin 2 to ground, then the uh, set reset latch sets itself. If I press the other switch, which pulls pin 6 threshold up to VCC, uh, it turns the lead off. And I can just set, reset, set, reset. So let's take a look at the block diagram of the 555 on Google. So I've just done an image search for, what was it, 555 internal. And uh, there are various internal diagrams. I quite like this one, Electronics Tutorials. That shows the internal workings quite clearly. So here we have uh, the trigger input, pin 2. It goes to the negative input of this comparator. The, the threshold uh, input, pin 6, goes to the positive input of the other comparator. So trigger needs to be taken low so that the negative input uh, goes more negative than the positive input. Positive input is at um, one-third VCC. That will put a high on the output of that comparator and set the latch. So taking trigger low sets the latch. Now threshold's the other way round you need to take threshold to VCC so that the positive input of its comparator is higher than the negative input, which is at two-thirds VCC. So taking threshold high resets the latch. So trigger low sets it, threshold high resets it. Let's take a look at that. So trigger low, trigger is pin 2. We've got uh, the yellow wire there connected to pin 2. Pulled through the switch low to negative here, sets the latch. Threshold, which is pin 6, that's going through this upper switch, which is um, connected through to VCC, take threshold high, and it resets the latch. So it ties up with the uh, logic diagram on electronics tutorials. But on this diagram, the output of the flip-flop, and of course they don't give you the actual logic diagram of the flip-flop, it just says flip-flop. The output is not Q, so we would expect the opposite of what we've just seen, uh, set it, not Q will go low. 
That, of course, is if the output driver is um, non-inverting. I think the output driver is inverting. And uh, that's because there are various diagrams like this one here, falpha.net. Uh, that's gone a bit bright, but you can see that um, there's a, a, an inverting bubble on the output of the latch. So we're looking at not Q there. And then there's also another inverter before you go to the output. So we've got two inversions there, which means that when you set the latch, you are going to get a high output. That's if this diagram is correct. Uh, there are some diagrams which are completely wrong. Uh, this one, although it shows this inverting stage there, which uh, agrees with me, the other diagrams I've seen, it's got the uh, three resistors here connected to the discharge pin. Well, that's certainly not right. They should be uh, down to ground between VCC and ground. And also they've got the sense of these uh, comparators wrong. Threshold on, on negative and trigger on positive. I don't think so. Uh, no, threshold is positive and trigger is negative and of course the three resistors go between VCC and ground so you do have to be a little careful. But what I can't find anywhere is the actual circuit of the flip-flop. I mean what is it? Cross-coupled NOR gates or cross-coupled NAND gates or is there something a bit more to it? I can't find a logic circuit for the flip-flop. They all just say flip-flop. Now what you can get is the actual circuit diagram of the bipolar 555. This is the one with standard uh, bipolar transistors. So here's the flip-flop. It's these three transistors here and I think it latches by virtue of this resistor feeding from collector of the third transistor back to base of the second one. I think that's how it works. But uh, I can't really get my head around this circuit and convert it in my mind to a standard logic diagram. Now, as well as the uh, bipolar uh, 555 circuit diagram, there is also down here the CMOS version, the 7555. Uh, that doesn't really help either. Oh, there is actually a, a cross-coupled uh, MOSFET type latch there, but I still can't decide how that works. Now I was a bit concerned about this behavior. If I hold down the, uh, this one is trigger, isn't it? And press threshold, nothing happens. If I hold down threshold and press trigger, the LED actually flashes on and off. And I was concerned that that isn't a very symmetric behavior. But actually, by comparing it directly with this, which is a 74 LS00, so that's cross-coupled uh, NAND gates, if I hold down one button and press the other, then uh, in that case Q, uh, not Q flashes. If I hold down that key and press that, Q flashes. Now, of course, we can only see uh, the Q output here. We've determined that it's not Q with a further inversion stage. So what I really need to do to see whether these are behaving the same is take that LED out. Actually, I don't need to do that. I can just take the current limiting resistor out. So now we've got... Press that, this one doesn't make it flash. Press that, this one does. Press that, this one doesn't make the LED flash. Press that, and this one does. So the behavior of the 555 set reset latch is almost, well it is identical to the behavior of the cross-coupled NAND uh, sort of primitive set reset latch. Now there is another logic function that the 555 can perform in addition to inversion and the set reset latch and that is uh, remember if I hold threshold high that's pin six and then press trigger that's the inversion because when trigger is taken low this switch pulls pin two down to uh, ground when trigger is taken low the output goes high so there's the inverting function so let's get rid of that switch and just tie threshold to VCC. So there's threshold tied high. I've connected pin six to pin eight. So we have the simple inverting function, pull trigger low and the LED goes high. So that's a simple inversion. Now let's fit a second switch. Let's put this one in here and connect this one to reset, which is 
pin four. I just need to tie the other side of that switch to uh, ground, bit of a lash up, but there it is. Now I have that inverting function, but I also have a function on reset. If I press the reset switch to ground, the inverting function no longer works. This actually ends up being a sort of AND gate. So this is the logic diagram of uh, this AND gate. Now there is an inversion on the trigger input. So in order to get a high there, I actually need to press it. So it's a low, but we're now pretending that's a high. So high and high gives me a high output. That's AND. If I let that one go low, we lose that high on the output. If I make this one go low, we lose that uh, high on the output. And if I make that one go, uh, what's that? That's low, so low, low. We also have no output. The only way you get an output is high on trigger and high on reset. Like I say, this is inverted. So me pressing this is a high, not pressing this one is a high. High and high gives a high output. So the 555 can behave as an AND gate with one of its inputs inverted. Now we also know that the 555 can be an inverter. It's behaving as an inverter now. I press the uh, trigger input low, actually really low. I'm pulling trigger, which is pin two, down to zero volts. The output goes high. So if we use another 555 to uh, put an inverter in here, for example, to get rid of that inversion, and then another inverter on the output, we get a NAND gate, and a NAND gate is a fundamental gate. You can build any logic out of a whole series of NAND gates. We could do this the other way around. I could put uh, an inverter on the other input here. That then, be uh, with two inversions on the input, that becomes a NOR function, and a NOR gate is another universal gate. You can build anything you want out of NOR gates. Now, I came across this yesterday, uh, Digital Logic Using 555 Chips. This is pmonta.com. This is Peter Monta. And this was part of the uh, 555 contest, which I believe was started by Jerry Ellsworth. And uh, also the designer of the 555 is also involved in this in some way. So we've got the standard 555 gate. This is the AND gate with one of the inputs inverted. And that's how it corresponds with the pins on the actual 555, reset and trigger are used as inputs. Threshold is tied high. We've also got an inverter. We've seen that one as well. Uh, he's also shown a transparent latch. Now that's a combination of using the set reset latch in the 555, but also additional 555s for these AND gates and these inverters. And that uh, steering logic here means that you can, with a clock pulse, steer data into either threshold or trigger. One, of course, is the inverse of the other. Uh, you can make a flip-flop with two of these transparent latches, but you do need a two-phase clock to clock that. Uh, an exclusive OR gate can be built uh, using some of these uh, standard 555 gates, the AND gate with the inverter, inverter on one input, and a few other gates. That builds an exclusive OR. And he's done other things such as a simple counter, two-bit counter, a uh, simple two-bit seven-segment decoder, and also his uh, two-phase clock to generate these uh, pulses which are uh, on opposite phases. So with two input gates, inverters, and uh, the latch that uh, the 555 has in it, what's to stop you building an entire computer out of 555s? Well, nothing other than time, energy, and lots of 555s. And so, of course, uh, being all excited about this yesterday, I was wondering whether it's perhaps time now to uh, remove the shift register circuit from this four-way breadboard, buy myself lots more of these 555s, and start building up some simple logic circuits to do things like counting and uh, that sort of thing. But uh, it is very time-consuming building these circuits uh, on breadboard, you have to find LEDs and find resistors and cut dozens of these little wire links. And I have to admit, uh, when I laid these eight 555s out, I'd forgotten that actually all the 555 does, other than its standard A-stable and uh, monostable modes, 
is this uh, simple inverter. I didn't know at the time actually about the two input gate. I learned that subsequently. But for some reason I had it in my mind that the 555 had a sort of flip-flop mode. And I was hoping that this would make a nice sort of binary counter, but I don't know where I got that from. No, not flip-flops, just simple inverters. So it just does this rather primitive alternate LED flashing. But uh, this just goes to show what a versatile chip the 555 timer is. I mean, quite apart from the oscillator and timer functions, which are what it's known for, the 555 can be used as uh, an element in an entire computer. Cheerio.